day Christ is born, alleluia, glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to all people, alleluia. There is only one God and one mediator between God and mortals. The man Jesus Christ, he was made visible in the flesh, tested by the Spirit, seen by the angels. Proclaimed to the angels to believe throughout the world. Blessed and only ruler of all. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal, whose home is inaccessible light, whom no one has seen, no one is able. To Christ be all honor and grace. For God wills that all shall find salvation and come to the knowledge of the truth. May it be Sunday because I think the weather is going to start cooling off. We can't have uh, Los Angeles summer all winter long, can we? But God bless you for, for staying with us. Um, a couple of announcements in, in our calendar for the week. Uh, today, potluck after church. Come on down and have some fun with us. Tuesday, food pantry and Wednesday, potluck Bible study resumes. We're uh, dealing with the subject of how to use the Bible for personal guidance. And so, uh, 
join us. It's a very free and open discussion, uh, and you, you don't have to worry that you missed last week, so you can't come this week. Just come on down. We'll have a good time together. Thursday, our Smart Continuum program continues, and choir, of course, this Saturday. Uh, for those of you who are really dedicated, God love you, we need help, of course, to undecorate. Uh, as Epiphany closes our season, we have to put our, our things away for the year, so we need help Saturday morning. This coming Sunday, uh, we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. It's the last festival for quite a long time, and we will celebrate uh, in great way because we will be baptizing uh, Jacqueline and Benjamin's uh, baby boy, Nathan, on, on this coming Sunday. So please uh, join us for that. I have some prayer updates to share with you uh, to keep in mind throughout the week. Susan begins uh, chemotherapy again tomorrow. Please keep Susan in your prayers. Mary Halverson, Bob's sister, uh, struggling with ovarian cancer. Uh, Tim Leon's mother, Betty, who's with us, but she's still healing from a, a fractured pelvis. And Raul Tapia's Uncle Ray, please keep him in your prayers as well. We have candles lighted in memory of those who have died recently, Dr. Albert McKenzie, uh, Mary Lou Savitt, Ned Bazzini, the martyrs of Sudan. I've lit candles for them because one of our visitors, uh, Kuth, uh, had people who, in her family who were killed just uh, a few weeks ago. And Donald Espra passed, uh, passed away this week, a friend of Ted Goulet. So please uh, lift up these names and, and their loved ones in your hearts and in your prayers. Let us then uh, continue with the readings of the scriptures today. Our first reading today on this Sunday of Epiphany comes to us through the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes, and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, and the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with me in reading responsively from Psalm 72. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. That the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the hills in righteousness. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. Let him come down like rain upon the moon field, like showers that water the earth. In his time, may the righteous flourish, and let there be an abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. May all kings bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. He has compassion on the lowly and poor, and preserves the lives of the needy. Our second reading is from Paul's epistle to the Christians in Ephesus. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, 
as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the, wi- when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Dear friends, God's grace and mercy to you in this beautiful new year. Amen. Amen. Did you get what you wanted for Christmas? Up in the uh, Glendale Galleria shopping not long ago, I was startled to see a very big poster in one of the uh, store windows there which said, get what you want. Never mind that our culture has shifted from the idea of holiday giving to holiday getting. The sign kind of suggests, you know, that if your friends and your family didn't, didn't get you, give you what you really wanted for Christmas, well, just come in and get it. Buy it yourself, you know. Get what you want. Well, today we celebrate uh, a few hours early. We're anticipating the festival of the epiphany of our Lord. And, of course, gift giving obviously comes to mind with this date. We don't know for sure who these exotic visitors were who who came from foreign lands. The Magi 
were Eastern astrologers who watched the skies for signs of important events. And, and at this time, they thought something really big was about to happen. We might want it to think uh, the whole thing, you know, in our times is maybe just uh, an old story, an old fiction thing until the 15th century when the astronomer Johannes Kepler actually witnessed the convergence of the uh, constellation Pisces and the planets Uranus and Jupiter. And it was so bright in the sky that Kep Kepler speculated that this might have been the mathematical clock working of, of the heavenly bodies. This might have been the Christmas star. And a lot of modern astrologers actually agree that that may have been what happens because every 704 years, these uh, heavenly bodies come together. So when the Magi saw the confluence of, of heavenly objects, whose meaning to them was that a king was coming and it would be in the house of the Hebrews, well, they paid attention. And this cosmic sign apparently continued over a period of months, apparently off and then on again as the orbits of, of heavenly bodies appear to be, you know, they come around in their orbit and then it seems like it's retrograde motion as, they, uh, as the star changes direction, even though it's still an orbit. Well, so much for the astronomy of Epiphany. The, the signature event of Epiphany was not in the sky, but in their hands. Matthew tells us that the Magi brought gifts as important figures in their, their own countries, and we tend to think of them as kings, it was appropriate to bring uh, impressive gifts for a king. So gifts, you know, cement relationships. People pay attention when they receive expensive gifts. And Matthew's gospel goes to great lengths to tell us Jesus' direct descent from ancient King David to imply that he is now the rightful heir to the throne of David. Jesus was born a king. And the scriptures say that, that the Magi brought these impressive gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Aside from the obvious you know, thing that we know what gold is, we might be a little mystified about the frankincense and the myrrh. Have more about them in, in just a moment. But all this, I think, suggests a question for us. At Christmas, did, did Jesus get what he wanted? Ever think of it that way? Several of us recently went to a baby shower for Alex and Max, who were the twin sons born to Joey Hale and the grandsons to Pastor Dennis Hale and his wife Jeannie, who were, they were all here for worship on the 22nd of December, just six days before the babies were born. And usually, you know, gifts at a baby shower are pretty obvious. Diapers, lots of them and cute little baby clothes, pajamas with the feet in and all that stuff, and the dozens of accoutrements that parents need to take care of tiny infants for their first weeks and, and months of life. When it comes to baby Jesus then, the Bible never mentions anything more than just these swaddling claws, whatever that is. I guess it translates into diapers and blankets, and Mary already had those things because she and Joseph were prepared. But gold? and frankincense and myrrh? I mean, as expensive gifts, I guess they're fitting because the Magi saw in this, this tiny baby a future king. But were they practical gifts in any sense of that word? Most of us probably would think not. So why? Well, gold, of course, was money. It still is, and there are hundreds of businesses that have sprung up recently with their signs saying, we buy gold. It, it kind of makes me want to dig through my old box of, of tie tacks and, and collar stays to find my old class ring, which was gold with a little ruby in the middle of it, and take it in and see what it might be worth. Frankincense was also highly prized. It was the most expensive and the most powerful incense of the ancient world. And, and it was, uh, although it's not as pricey anymore, you can actually buy packets of it over at the Super King in San Fernando. Frankincense is still used in churches to fragrance, uh, fragrance the entire sanctuary. Myrrh was another spice that uh, was highly valued. And here especially we verged into the territory of symbolism in, in this story. Many of the gospel stories have symbolism laced in there. Myrrh was a burial spice. And the gospel tells us that 
at the end of it, when Jesus' body is laid in other cloths to be placed in the tomb, that a different Joseph and a man named Nicodemus brought a very large amount of myrrh to uh, put with the body when it was laid in the tomb. So each of these gifts has a meaning, a symbolism for this holy child. Not only is he recognized as a king, that's the gold, and as high priest, that's the frankincense, his death also figures at his birth as kind of like a, a, a heads up, an awareness for us that Christ would die for us. Well, the second big thing here, I actually mentioned in the newsletter this month that Jesus began his life almost immediately as a refugee because of Herod's evil intention to kill off any potential competitor to his throne. Joseph took Mary and the, and the Holy Child and they fled the country. They went to Egypt where they apparently stayed for months or we don't know, maybe several years until they were sure that the evil king was dead. So the Holy Family had been traveling during Mary's pregnancy from their home in Nazareth. They went up to Judea for the official census, and then they left with little resources after the birth of Jesus. And then they were uprooted again from whatever lodging they had found there in Bethlehem in order to flee for their lives. And the one gift that displaced refugees could sorely use living in, in a foreign country was cash, cash. So beyond the beautiful symbolism of gold and frankincense and myrrh given by the wise men in, in recognition of Jesus' importance and his stature, all of these gifts were basically cash for their survival. Is it fair then to ask this question, did Jesus get what he wanted for Christmas? Well, not exactly, but he got what he needed. The family got what they needed to survive which now takes me back to our first question. Did you get what you wanted for Christmas? Our lives become cluttered with stuff, don't they? Our homes are full. Even, even if we're not diagnosed as hoarders, we still got a lot of stuff in apartments and, and homes. In recent years, my extended family and friends, we try to make gifts out of consumables, you know, treats of food or libations, things that get used up and don't take permanent residence in, in your house. They don't have to be dusted or stored or packed and moved every time that you move. But I wonder if, if year after year we allow ourselves to collect stuff in lieu of getting what we wanted. Is that because we really don't know what we want in life? As life goes by so, so quickly, it's not stuff that our hearts desire. It's, it's the intangibles that we really want, and we accept all the second best, maybe not even second best, by collecting at, at great cost a lot of stuff that doesn't really fill the emptiness we have inside. After all, we want love, don't we? But why do we give each other stuff as a sign of love when what we really want is love? And we want peace. But why is it that we don't produce the, the, and share what's needed to, to make peace in our lives, peace in our cities, peace uh, abroad, peace in, in our homes, if the millions of Christians in this country would just work at the things that make for peace? Wouldn't a lot of those vexing issues that we complain about go away? Things like racism and prejudice and violence and suspicion, dirty politics, injustice, we want the gifts of peace. And these are things that money can't buy. But anybody can have them. And anybody can give them and share them and exchange them. If we would just, you know, give up some of the things that get in their way. Starting with maybe our own egos and things like that. We can't enjoy faith in our lives if we're holding on to distrust. We, we can't have joy if our lives are, are loaded down with resentment. We can't really have hope. If we're burdened with fear, let that go. We can't live into a bright future if we're still living in the past and we're stuck there, unforgiving and, and disgruntled. The gifts that we could get out of Christmas are always there for us. They're the gifts of grace and, and love and hope and peace. But as long as we're on this theme of Christmas gifts, we say that we honor Christ in, in 
as our newborn king. Let us then bravely ask, and this takes some self-examination, ask ourselves, does Jesus get what he wants from us? Is our honor and praise, you know, and our songs and prayers what he wants for Christmas? We ran out of time uh, this Christmas season to sing all of the favorite carols that, that we'd like to, and one of them that got passed over is called In the Bleak Midwinter, in which uh, we imagine ourselves to have been there long ago in a stable that sufficed for a throne for the newborn king. And verse 3 goes like this. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I, were, if I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him. Give him my heart. And this is no throwaway sentiment, my friends. What Jesus wants from you is a place in your heart. And a place also, that means a place in your life and a place in, in, in your values and a place in your commitments. A place and a part of your energies and, and, and your skills a place in your life. And when you turn to God and you give these things, you will find that the beauty of the season and, and the truest meaning of Christmas doesn't need to get packed away for the rest of the year. For there, when Christ is in your life, around you and in your hood and, and in your neighbors, in the poor and the homeless, Christ is there too, among all of those who still suffer whether it's prejudice or being refugees because of violence or fear, we have a lot to do if we're serious about our faith, to place gifts at his feet, which are much more precious than gold or frankincense or myrrh. And it all begins with our hearts. Amen? Amen.
faith as expressed in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is in the sea and the sea. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not by me, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate before the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the maker of heaven and earth, the Word made flesh, the Lord and giver of life. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. grace of God shines upon us, bringing salvation to the whole world. We are saved, our sins are washed away, not because of anything we have done, but according to God's mercy in Jesus Christ. Renewed by the Holy Spirit, let us live in hope and joy. Amen. Amen. We live in the peace which angels announce to the earth. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Share the peace with one another.
Thanksgiving for the faithful departed, especially Albert, Don, Mary Lou, Ned, and the martyrs of South Sudan. That their witness, the gospel, inspire our confidence in the boundless riches of Christ. We pray, God of mercy. Receive our prayer. God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who has made his dwelling among us, your Son Jesus Christ, our Lord.
us pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be blessings for others. We all heaven and earth, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to God. Let us give thanks to God most It is right and our highest joy to offer you thanks and praise, O God, with angels, archangels, and all the heavenly chorus, who sang of greatest joy and heavenly peace. For you have presented to the world the gift of your Son, our Lord Emmanuel, the gift of reconciliation and compassion, the gift of love for us, the gift of his life. In the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus was at table with his disciples, when he took bread and he gave thanks to you, and he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body given for you. Do this whenever you do in memory of me. And after the supper, he took a cup and gave thanks to you and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you remember me. Now we remember the gift of his life and ministry, his healing and compassion, his suffering and death and rising again, to give the gift of new life to everyone who trusts his promises. And now we give you thanks for these gifts, which are for us the body and blood of Christ. And we give you thanks for the songs of angels, for the faithfulness of blessed Mary, the witness of the saints and apostles, and the generosity of all hearts who call him Lord. Most of all, we give you thanks, almighty God, for the gifts of forgiveness and grace which unite us all in one hope and one faith and give us voices to praise and sing and pray to you. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit belongs all praise and honor and glory among your faithful people, both now and for ages of ages to come. and trust we offer the prayer our Lord has given us. Our, our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. And give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. In the breaking of this bread, the mystery hidden for ages is revealed to us. Come, behold, and receive God's grace.
God, that in this bread and cup of Christ's very life, you give us food for our journey. As with a child, you lead us, nourish us with every grace to serve our Lord Emmanuel, that our lives proclaim the good news of our great joy in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the word that Mary brought to birth carry you into new and abundant life. May the word that Joseph cradled in his arms enfold you with love and strength. May the word that angels proclaimed in song bring harmony to our world. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.